the session is about machine learning and uh, whether machine can learn, and more is, most importantly, how we as a Spring and Java developers can take advantage of it. I need to start with a quick disclaimer. So some of the ideas and techniques that we're going to discuss are not in the, on the roadmaps of neither of Pivotal or Spring team. So unless it's stated otherwise, there will be no commitment for future suppose. But I will be free to discuss the details later after the discussion. So why this topic would matter? I, I can argue that everyone would have acknowledged the recent uh, race in machine learning and uh, particularly the advancement within the computer vision, language processing itself, the, um, the ability of this new way of, 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 of re reasoning about uh, problems and uh, because of this allowing us to solve otherwise unprogrammable uh, tasks. And um, having acknowledged this, there is also, uh, we have also to, uh, maybe, well, if someone has tried to use uh, these new technologies and take advantage of it with, within the context of Spring and Java, um, most likely have noticed that there is a gap, and it is a two side gaps. It's one side uh, technological based because of the um, nature of those, uh, those uh, frameworks, they, uh, they expect uh, very intensive math computations that require special hardware advancement and a lot of the frameworks that and toolkits that are used out there are written in order to take advantage of this hardware advancement and GDK as it stands at the moment doesn't put, at least I'm not aware of any explicit effort to, to try to, 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 to exploit those advantages and therefore most of the frameworks are C++ based and very often they provide uh, language bindings for Python as a first choice for high level abstractions. So um, that's not very handy for Java developers itself. And furthermore, there is a certain cultural gap as well. I was surprised to stumble upon this uh, tweet uh, recently, which actually comes from uh, um, known uh, data scientist communities. And I tend to disagree with this approach of doing software, but um, most important message is how can we, after all, take advantage as Java and Spring developers of the advancement with the Spring machine learning and deep learning in particular, and uh, allow and enable our applications and make, um, uh, make it possible to deliver um, greater and, uh, business solutions for our customers. Because the topic is pretty broad, I will try very, from the very beginning to narrow and to, 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 to put the focus on what we're going to discuss today. From the field of machine learning, we're going to focus particularly on supervised machine learning and in particular deep learning uh, subset of machine learning, which is uh, uh, special techniques or method to do machine learning that uh, is characterized with uh, layers of uh, human-like neural networks and internal structures to represent uh, the, the, the weren't uh, um, uh, rules. I will explain this a little bit further. Furthermore, the primary tools that we're going to use for demonstration will be TensorFlow for as deep learning uh, network, uh, deep learning uh, uh, toolkit. Also, um, because the, 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 the machine learning usually have these two stages and supervised machine learning training and uh, using the trained model for evaluation or uh, model inference as the term stands, um, uh, we would be focusing on the using a pre-trained model uh, which um, uh, within the domain of real-time um, analytics and predictions using Spring Cloud Stream and of course Java and Spring is in the focus. In short, what would take, and those are the, yeah, what would take to build applications like this that would allow us, for example, to um, analyze input image or sequence of input images so that we can detect objects or detect poses, faces, and use this meta information for further processing down the pipeline. I would go a little bit more in details and explain how this works and give some examples, but before this, a couple of slides about what machine learning is and most importantly how it differs from our known classical, uh, this is classical programming paradigm that we are used to it. Within the classical uh, programming uh, paradigm, we write rules which are our instructions or programs that apply it on some input data or TL to produce some answers, desired answers. We use logic and assertions in order to verify the correctness of these uh, programs. With machine learning, um, the axes are slightly inverted. Actually, we don't um, 
right up front the rules uh, declaratively, but actually we respect that the machine would find these hidden rules that would allow us to map the input data to the desired answers. In order to achieve this, we are supposed to teach the machine, this is the supervising phase um, or the training phase of the machine learning, where we're passing the annotated data sets, um, historical data sets, where for any en data entry in these data sets, we have to provide or to provide annotation or expected answers uh, for, for, for this uh, data entry, it's feeding this uh, enough uh, amount of data through the machine learning uh, algorithms of choice. Uh, eventually, uh, after several uh, couple of iterations, we can yield and reach uh, rules or models that satisfy some, um, some, some, some criteria, some performance, some accuracy. And that's another difference within the space of machine learning. Actually, the, the reward is assumed to be unpredictable and the result and the way how we actually estimate the correctness of our model is usually statistical tools in order to determine the boundary of what we assume correct and what is not. Uh, when we talk about the training and uh, evaluating the trained models, it is uh, very uh, obvious that we have these two life cycle stages, the offline uh, training of the models, which is the primary domain for the data scientists. It requires a lot of efforts uh, to find the right data sets, to prepare the data sets, to determine the right features. But this is not the topic of this, the, 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 the presentation uh, um, today. We assume that smart guys would provide us with uh, trained models, which is the, uh, also the, the, the hidden rules that map the, the, desired, the input data to desired uh, output. And we can reuse this in real-time systems. And this is practically, this already crosses our day-to-day um, -day business, to use this in real-time streaming, for example, or any applications in order to infer or process new it works. Uh, new data, known data, and uh, hope that the model would actually infer uh, and evaluate the predictions within the expected boundaries. So this is the focus of the presentation. And when I talk about when we talked about evaluation of the pre-trained models, there are two main approaches to, to, to use this. One most common one is to load the, the pre-trained models in some uh, remote. Uh, server and um, serve, provide, expose some sort of uh, uh, RPC or some sort of interface for, which can be used. Very often this is RESTful interface. You would see this approach very common for, for the cloud, uh, provision, uh, cloud solution, cloud services out there that expose some sort of machine learning, allowing you to, for example, your pipeline, processing streaming pipeline to perform remote calls and uh, um, uh, process the data that uh, that is necessary, that is required. This is not, uh, yeah, this is uh, from, from, from development standpoint pretty straightforward. You can do it today. You can have your processor that performs and communicates with remote service and, 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 uh, pre and um, consumes the result. What is more interesting and what we focus today is actually how we can take the pre built, the pre trained models and build them and embed them into your pipeline. So this second approach has its own merits and pros and cons. I wouldn't have much time, this is just 30 minutes, I'm trying to fit a lot of material inside to, to, deal, to, to explain the context, and, but I would, uh, yeah, I would love to discuss this uh, uh, at the end uh, during the question session. So with the, within the, um, this approach, we generally, this is sort of the reference architecture, we are looking for Java runtime that would allow us to load deep learning, DL stands for deep learning, pre-trained models so, and uh, perform evaluation on the input and, pr perform, uh, and, and, and achieve some uh, performance, um, some predictions as an output. So this uh, yields two requirements. We need to have a Java uh, runtime. And secondly, we need a portable models. That means some models that reliably can allow us to transfer the trained model from training stage to the um, to, to evaluation stage as well. Um, <coughs> Although this, uh, this uh, portable model seems to be trivial, many of the frameworks out there does not satisfy this requirement uh, reliably. Uh, talking about frameworks, very quick. Uh, um, uh, scanning through the existing frameworks uh, at the moment. Uh, you, you can see that it's quite competitive uh, uh, market out there. Almost any big player has its own framework. They're not compatible amongst themselves. And uh, the important message from this slide is that as far, the TensorFlow has been the like order of magnitude most popular uh, um, framework across uh, this domain. If we look behind and uh, sneak uh, uh, 
and, tr and um, explore what are the languages that have been used to implement those frameworks without no exceptions. Even the deep learning 4J, which is primarily Java framework for deep learning, they use a C++ core to implement uh, um, so that they can leverage the hardware accelerations like the CPU blast or, or, or uh, GPU um, uh, features of the hardware underneath and provide a, a layer for binding with different languages and almost without exception, this language of choice is Python for, as a high abstraction. Uh, because we're interested in Java, uh, TensorFlow fortunately provides a tiny but uh, um, good enough API, Java API, that allows to perform real-time um, uh, evaluation of pre-trained models. Uh, another interesting come, um, uh, prospect is deep learning for j This is something that we have started investigating. And uh, yeah, we, if we have time toward the end of the presentation, I can provide more um, details about this. As I started my presentation earlier, we are focusing on real-time evaluation of the pre-trained uh, machine learning models. So the tools of choice is Spring Cloud Dataflow, which uh, in essence is um, uh, toolkit for building uh, data integration, real-time and batch uh, processing pipelines. It is agnostic to the uh, running execution platforms. It's um, uh, that you can actually run it on premise or on cloud. Uh, both uh, Kubernetes and PCF are first-class citizens. Um, it provide, yeah, the unit of execution with the Spring Cloud Dataflow, Spring Boot application that can um, uh, impersonate the roles of source of data, processor of data, or sync of data, and you can connect them into a chain using um, a pluggable middleware with the help of Spring Cloud Stream uh, underneath. Also, the Spring Cloud Dataflow, uh, I mean, um, I have to make it clear that this is not um, an introduction to Spring Cloud, Cloud Dataflow talk, talk, so uh, there will be a few other talks uh, later this week, so please attend us, but I'm just trying to, to, to get the essence of the and, and the purpose of the T2 because this is the primary tool that we're going to use for our experiments later on. Um, also, it, it provides a nice, um, useful pipe and filter like DSL for expressing your uh, pipelines on high level and deploying those in. Um, so, to summarize it, we need a Spring Cloud Data Flow processor unit that would allow, allow us to score or to evaluate uh, um, models at runtime. And uh, without further ado, I'll start with a demo. We are going to uh, provide, um, um, to, to start a very simple pipeline which should li uh, listen or monitor a single input folder. When you drop an image in that folder, it would be passed uh, to the uh, object detector um, uh, processor, which is Spring Cloud, Dat uh, Spring Cloud Dataflow App Starters processor, which would be preloaded with pre-trained uh, uh, TensorFlow model for object detection. Uh, this processor would be able to detect the different objects, uh, distinct different objects into input images, and uh, creates um, JSON metadata, which represents the category of the object that had been detected and the location of the object. Uh, also, by, by default, this processor, uh, this would be passed into the header of the ongoing message. Uh, also, the object detector, by default, would augment the input image into the payload with the metadata uh, and uh, draw it with within the image that uh, you, you, is going outbound. Okay, I'm going to use, is it readable? And I cannot see it from my screen, so. Um, so I have a locally running Spring Cloud Dataflow server with uh, all necessary applications that I'm going to use for, for the demonstration. And I'll try to create uh, the simple pipeline I've just showed. Just mentioned to gain some time, I'm just going to copy paste the pipeline and walk you through. Where am I? Okay, so as you can see, this is the file that would monitor for this temp folder for images there, would pass everything that is passed into the file uh, folder into the object mode, uh, to the object processor. Later, would is preloaded with a uh, uh, pre-trained TensorFlow model and uh, would uh, evaluate the images, would detect the objects, and everything that has been detected would be passed on the outbound messages as a um, header message in this case, while the body of the uh, outbound messages would be augmented to a detected object and would be passed to the special image viewer sync processor that would visualize the result. Let's go ahead and uh, deploy this pipeline. Wow, it gets deployed, and 
it's been deploying. Okay. I would give you some, so what this processor does in, internally, it's uh, quite straightforward. It has uh, three components, the input and output converters, as well as the tender for ser TensorFlow service in the middle. So the TensorFlow service is simple uh, Java service that is capable to load using the TensorFlow Java API to load pre-trained uh, TensorFlow models and uh, run them for evaluation with some input tensors and produce output tensors. Tensor, since the TensorFlow framework is the main abstraction for representing data, it actually stands for multi-dimensional array and any tensor, and the TensorFlow engine itself is comp math computational engine that can take sets of tensors and um, run the pre-configured the, the pre graph, which is pre-trained and uh, with certain weights and produce tensors and an output. So in order to make sense of those, this information, we need input converter to convert the inbound message into set of tensors expected by the, the model and on, in, in return to convert the outbound, the produced message, produced tensors into message that we can consume down the pipeline. Let's see how our My plan is doing. Okay. So, uh, we, yeah, we have to put some images as. This is something that I uh, uh, took photo on the lobby this morning from the elevator so and it is this is the input image in this case okay everything here so this particular model and there is a sort of 20 about 20 different pre-trained models that are supported with this object detection tensorflow where you trade the speed for accuracy this is more accurate model but it takes about uh, for this hardware which doesn't have any cpu advancement or, 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 or gpu advancement it takes about uh, Okay, and this is the result from the image viewer. You can see some interesting details that the, 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 the backpack is detected. Some this is actually mis, misrepresented as a bench, but uh, so you give uh, uh, get some some uh, hopefully some sense about the capabilities of, uh, of uh, and how this works. Let's send one more message, one more image. Sorry. Okay, this was another picture from yesterday evening. This is our boot. Why everything appears here? So again, it will take about 10 seconds to, to, to evaluate this mission, message and produce the, the result here. Okay, you can recognize yeah, it's funny that the bottle with water is recognized, but the glass of beer is uh, is uh, avoided. Uh, yeah, I like this uh, this model particularly. It's it's my. Um, so um, uh, let's go further and actually try to make this uh, demo a little bit more interactive and more real time like. So we're going to build a pipeline that instead of having the input source coming from a file, you are going to create a snapshot from the web camera real, uh, here in live. And um, first thing first, I'm going to destroy the existing uh, pipeline. It's running on my machine, so I'll free some resources and deploy the other pipeline. Actually, we're going to create three pipelines. I'll explain those in a minute, just to make it even more interesting. Okay. So, again, it's similar like the previous example, but this time we are using a webcam as a source of our information, which is configured to create a snap, take a snapshot every five seconds. Uh, and pass them to the object detector, which in turn uh, sends the augmented images to the uh, image viewer. At the same time, the, we are adding an additional pipeline that takes the output uh, uh, message from the object detector, extracts the 
header, so from the headers, the result, which is the JSON description of the objects that we have detected within the images, and passes this to the log uh, uh, sync, which would allow us to actually uh, uh, browse and see what are the JSON representations of those detected objects, which would be the categories, the locations, the bounding box, and the confidence that certain um, object exists in this place. So in the input images. Also, we are going to get the, uh, the, these JSON messages, break all detected objects, uh, uh, j which would be the, the separate JSON objects within the array of objects, and break those into separate messages, and use the field um, value counter analytics sync, which would allow us to count all occurrences of different type of objects and visualize this with uh, Spring Cloud Data Flow analytics view. So let's deploy those three pipelines. Let's see what we can discuss. Okay, so so far we have discussed only the object detection approach. Um, Spring Cloud Data Flow provides out of the box uh, implementation for a few other state of the art uh, machine learning algorithms uh, like uh, yeah, inception based uh, image recognitions, uh, uh, instance and semantic uh, um, segmentations, which are kind of uh, extension of the object detection approach. Uh, on the language side, processing side, you have a sentiment analysis for Twitter messages. And we have some experimental work going with the face detection and face recognition. Unfortunately, we don't have much time to discuss in detail those, but feel free to approach me after the talk or jump down to the, to the booth. We have some demos on those as well. Uh, let's see how our deployment is going. Still on the way. Sorry? In, sorry, in Spring Root? I have, I have a few, yeah. It's actually, all this code is available publicly as a, par, uh, as a part of the Spring Cloud up, uh, Upstarters uh, uh, set of project on GitHub, so you can find all codes. And I, in fact, I have some, okay. So this is, uh, as I said, taking a snapshot maybe every five seconds and trying to show them, so. Not sure what else we can uh, demonstrate, um, but um, I also have prepared a couple of slides with the codes, but uh, because of the time pressure, <laughs> what is it? Okay, so now I'm screwed, yeah. <laughs> I, I like the previous model. Actually, here I have changed the model, which is less accurate, obviously, and much more punish, punishful um, uh, for, for trading the speed. Okay, so I'm not sure what, what can I, I, I else. Okay, let's actually make it a little bit more interesting out um, because we have this pipeline that uh, also is collecting this information in our analytics sync. I'm going to actually open this analytics sync. So we are sending the objects and use, okay. Yeah, and practically, let's see. Again, uh, uh, keep in mind that this hardware that we are running this model now is definitely not uh, the, the the, the, the right one to, to run this type of evaluation in real time, which opens yet another discussion for the whole proper deployment and environment, which is, again, beyond the scope of this presentation, but uh, there is uh, ongoing discussions. Okay. And, yeah. We can do something even more interesting, but let's not waste more time on this. Uh, I hope this gives you some insights about the capabilities that we have uh, so far because this uh, this uh, open yeah this gives me the opportunity to wrap it up and you've seen that um, I think we, we agree that uh, acknowledge that machine learning is uh, advancing with quite rapid uh, pace so far but although it is uh, uh, it seems complex I believe and I've tried to, to, to demonstrate that we can start using it as, uh, as from now. At least some parts of it are good enough and, uh, and um, uh, useful enough so that we can start making us usage of it. And sp the Spring team and Pivotal is committed to explore what is the easiest way to make those, uh, those capabilities more accessible for, for us. Um, 
in this process, uh, this is kind of your feedback is uh, much appreciated because this is what would give our uh, shape and direction where to to, to uh, what uh, to address and uh, go f next. And when I talk about next, there are some ideas what we should uh, do. And again, those are not ideas that we commit on, but it seems like there is some consensus within our team and outside that maybe some of those uh, code that right now is Spring Cloud app starters can be exported, extracted as a top level libraries that can be used and reused then in some different uh, uh, programming models. And in particular, I'm interested, we're interested into reusing those into Spring Cloud functions, Spring Cloud batch. Um, so far, we, I didn't, um, there, is, there is this concept of trans transfer learning. So far, we've discussed how we can pick a pre-trained model from someone and use it and for real time. So if you are lucky, your data scientist would create this model. If you're not, you would have to opt for one of the um, um, uh, ready to use, uh, uh, for example, object detection models provided by the Google TensorFlow object API um, uh, uh, site. And then you would still want to customize this object for your particular needs. Uh, you would like to detect, I mean, those, those models may come with capabilities to detect 100 or 500 different objects, but you would want to actually, there was very interesting uh, use case. Some, some guy in Japan actually used these techniques to help her, uh, his family's farm to detect different type of cucumbers, which were the, was the most uh, involving task to sort the different uh, shape of cucumbers. So he used object detection to, to do this. And um, transfer learning is techniques where you can very cheaply retrain the last uh, layer of your um, in this case, it's sort of convolutional network uh, pre-trained model. Usually, you would need a uh, hundred of images with annotated images just to um, uh, customize this layer and to make it make this model using the existing pre-trained model, then customize it so that you can use it for a particular need. So we've been looking for we are looking for a way how we can actually automate this process as a part of the whole life cycle of uh, of. Uh, using pre-trained models. And uh, ONGS is another interesting initiative. Um, if you remember, we had kind of uh, five or six different uh, deep learning frameworks that were competing from Microsoft, Facebook, um, um, uh, Amazon as well. They all have the support, uh, export their data in different formats, but there is this uh, unification effort which is under the, the scope of this ONGS um, uh, project that tries to, to, to bring a unified format for exporting um, the pre-trained models. And almost everyone but TensorFlow is part of this consortium. It is interesting, therefore, there is some work going from Deep Learning 4J guys to implement a Java runtime for this ONGS uh, uh, runtime. And this would allow us, so if this happens, it's interesting, promising solution would be able actually to provide Spring Cloud Data Flow app starters that would allow it to evaluate output and pre-trained models from any of the other frameworks as well, not TensorFlow. So this is an interesting way to go. And as I mentioned, if we, if we export and extract and refactor the, the, te, the, the deep learning functionality that is now part of Spring Cloud Stream um, implementations in top level apps, so it would be trivial to reuse this into Spring Boot application as well. So this is the final and uh, final slide, please. As I mentioned, this is not uh, introduction talk for the Spring Cloud Data Flow, but in Spring Cloud Stream, but to learn more about those, uh, this framework and more in details, please visit the following sessions. Thanks for your attention and yeah, I'm, I'm open for questions. <laughs>